They are the stories that made us want to believe. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 episodes of The X-Files. For this list, we're paying attention to the episodes that had people a buzz around the water coolers the next day, and fans on the internet talking for years to come. So, before The X-Files returns to the small screen, let's take a look at some of the tales that had us afraid to watch with the lights off. Skull, human skull. Silver gray. His eyes cold, very cold, staring at Elizabeth. Number 10, Darkness Falls. We gotta keep moving it. We're not gonna make it. When an entire logging crew vanishes in a remote town for the second time in a century, agents Mulder and Scully are called in to investigate. Although the local officials suspect it's a case of eco-terrorism gone too far, an activist points the blame in a very odd place, insects. A lot of lumber from a big tree like this. Thousands of board feet, hell of a lot easier than taking a lot of smaller, younger trees. As it turns out, the loggers cut down old trees that were marked as off-limits and let loose swarms of deadly locusts. With our heroes now trapped, and light being the only thing keeping the insects at bay, we really get to see how Mulder and Scully handle a desperate situation. I mean, you sent that call hours ago. I mean, help would have been here by now. Well, I'm not going to give up on Spinny. He gave me his word he'd come back to get us. And if he doesn't? We'll think of something. Darkness Falls is a prime example of one of the X-Files' recurring themes, humans tampering with things they don't understand. Some kind of spider's nest or insect cocoon. What kind of an insect could have gotten a man all the way up into that tree? Itsy, itsy spider. Number nine, home. <laughs> home is where the horror is. When a baby with birth defects is found dead after being buried alive, Mulder and Scully stumble upon a warped, murderous, and of course, incestuous family. Nulax Ova syndrome, Michael Gruber syndrome, estrophy of the cloaca. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. The only episode never rebroadcast on Fox, Home features some of the most graphic violence in the series, along with some of the most horrifying subject matter the show ever tackled, and that's saying a lot. Reminiscent of the 1974 classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Home puts Mulder and Scully in the middle of a slasher story. It's telling that, despite the many grotesque and supernatural creatures depicted on the X-Files each week, among the most disturbing were all of these essentially human monsters. A new family, one we'll be proud of, find a new place to call ours, a new home, a brand new home. Number 8, Bad Blood. <laughs> In this comedic episode, it's a case of he said, she said, when Mulder kills a young man he believes to be a vampire. <laughs> to make sure they have their story straight, Scully relates her version of what happened, while Mulder presents his own. Skinner wants our report in one hour. What are you going to tell him? The contrast between their stories and the way each exaggerates the other's negative traits, while making themselves look more competent, is pretty hilarious. What's really going on in the town is stranger than either of their recollections, though. But we don't want to spoil that here. Okay, here's something you may not know. Shooting out the tires on a runaway RV is a lot harder than it looked. I then tried a different approach. <laughs> Number seven, tombs. This episode marked the return of the X-Files' first monster of the week, the eponymous serial killer Eugene Victor Toombs. After Mulder's assertions about Toombs' unnatural longevity and ability to contort his body are dismissed in court, the mutant murderer is set free. Look at him, a hundred years old. I contend old. that perhaps through a genetic mutation, Eugene Toombs is capable of contorting and elongating his body in order to gain access to victims. When Mulder refuses to let it go, Toombs frames Mulder for assault. However, Toombs' need to kill ultimately leads to his undoing. The story also introduces Walter Skinner, who, despite his eventual role as a critical ally of the X-Files, is looking for any excuse to shut him down, albeit under the watch of the shadowy smoking man. Then may I advise you to step away for a while? 
Clear your head, take an extended vacation. That's a good idea. Thanks for your concern. Number six, the postmodern Prometheus. A black and white tribute to the classic Frankenstein films. This episode details a town's own fantastical local legend, the Great Mutato. Afflicted with a second face and other deformities, Mutato is the result of a mad scientist's experiments. You gave a description of the intruder. You said that he had a gross face and lumps on his head. Mm -hmm. And two mouths. I don't know if I mentioned that. Framing his creation for murder, the scientist incites the town folk into an angry mob, complete with torches. However, Butato proves to them that he is not a monster, and is instead merely a lonely man with a love of share and peanut butter sandwiches, leading our agents to make sure Mutato's story gets a happy ending. With its distinctive style and exploration of themes like motherhood and human connection, the postmodern Prometheus is a must-watch. My father, having only one son, a spiteful, hateful man of science, incapable of the deeper sentiments, he came to realize that this son had been conducting secret experiments, of which I was the most unfortunate product. Number five, Anasazi. I'm in a boxcar, buried inside a quarry. There are bodies everywhere. A pivotal episode in the overall arc of the show, Anasazi has a lot happening, from the death of Mulder's father, as well as the revelation of his role in the disappearance of Mulder's sister, to the discovery of evidence of the alien conspiracy encrypted in Navajo. Is it worth it? Is this cassette worth risking everything? I'll tell you when I find out what's on it. Now just tell me who I can talk to about breaking that code. The truth-seeking agent is really put through the ringer this time, emotionally and physically, as he's dosed with paranoia-inducing drugs and is running a high fever. Scully, through it all, tries to keep him from losing his job and for being framed for his father's murder. You shot me. Yes, I did. You didn't give me much choice. Along with its two follow-up episodes, Anasazi reveals parts of the truth, while deepening the series' central mythos. Number four, Jose Chung's From Outer Space. Much like Bad Blood, Jose Chung's From Outer Space features multiple points of view, all told to author Jose Chung about the events surrounding a pair of teenagers' apparent abduction by aliens. Those kids' stories couldn't be more bleepin' different. Many of the stories are contradictory and nonsensical, featuring Air Force pilots masquerading as aliens and a bizarre man who starts a cult wherein enlightenment can be found at the center of the Earth. Assuming, of course, that your soul is able to avoid the lava men. Furthermore, we are treated to an appearance by the men in black, played by Jesse Ventura and Alex Trebek, who insist that UFO sightings are merely an illusion of light off of the planet Venus. Find absolutely no reason why anyone would think you crazy if you describe this meeting of ours. You're feeling very sleepy, very relaxed. Alex Trebek, the game show host? Number three, pilot. Sorry, nobody down here but the FBI's most unwanted. That's untrue, Mulder. Our most wanted federal agents are first brought together to investigate a group of murdered high schoolers. And of course, Mulder believes that they may have been abducted by aliens. This is the way it happens. I don't know how I get out there. I'll just find myself out in the woods. How long has it been happening? Ever since the summer we graduated. So much that defines the series is laid out here, from Mulder's belief in the paranormal and his obsession with his sister's disappearance, to Scully's role as a skeptical and logical counterpoint. You don't honestly believe this is some kind of an extraterrestrial. The ever-present smoking man even has an appearance, establishing the government's conspiracy to keep the public in the dark. The X-Files' first episode is still a great hour of television, and a fantastic way to kick off the series. Let her go! Number two, Clyde Bruckman's final repose. Get out of here, you monster. Is everything all right, Mrs. Lowe? You have enough supplies? You have enough dog food? Clyde Bruckman is a psychic able to see how people die. Instead of becoming a television psychic, however, Bruckman takes the high road and uses his knowledge to sell insurance to provide for those the deceased will leave behind. But when a psychic begins killing other fortune tellers, 
Bruckman is called on by Mulder and Scully to assist in apprehending the killer, and he must face his own heartbreaking, destined fate. My body begins to turn a greenish white with spots of purple. Next, the insects arrive. Peter Boyle's understated, funny, tragic portrayal of Buckman earned him a well-deserved Emmy Award and made this episode a true gem. Mr. Bruckman, can you tell us why the killer is murdering people in the way that he is? Why does anyone do the things they do? Why do I sell insurance? I wish I knew. Before we get to our number one, here are a few honorable mentions. Can you feel it, Frank? Come on, man, hang can up the you phone. You Frank, you hang up the phone! Back off! Shut. Corporate office just resigned. There's no more enemies. No, no, I think we should notify El Jefe ASAP. We don't want our collective asses chewed out all over again. Mulder, are you sure that's the best thing to do? Look, little lady, I think it's time you got your panties on straight. We're federal officers. We go by the book. We're investigating a case! Check the ID! Hide your head! Hide your head! Number one, ice. We're not who we are. It goes no further than this. In a plot reminiscent of John Carpenter's The Thing, a remote station in a frigid climate is terrorized by an unknown organism. The opening scene, featuring two bloody, crazed men killing each other, leaves a lasting impression, and things remain tense after Mulder and Scully are called in. So, uh, those spots didn't have anything to do with uh, those guys killing each other, right? I wouldn't rule it out. Just re-examine the dog. Nodules are gone. As they and their fellow investigators become exposed to the parasitic creatures and turn paranoid, the still new partners must learn to trust one another to escape the desperate situation and find a cure. Although some strong and engaging stories preceded it, ICE is when the X-Files really began to hit its stride. Hodge. What? Come take a look at this. Do you agree with our list? That's great. Now, can you make me a little cherub that squirts water? Which episode of The X-Files is your favorite? For more truthful top tens posted out there every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Maybe there's hope.